In this video, I'm going to talk about EOQ, otherwise known as economic order quantity. So this sounds a little complex, but what we're really talking about here is when you order inventory, so let's say you, you start your own business and, and you, you need to buy some inventory, you need to know precisely how much inventory you want to buy because you don't want to buy too much or too little. So if you buy too little, then you could have a thing called a stock out. A stock out is where the customer shows up, they're ready to buy your product, and it's not on the shelf. You, they want it, but it's not there. So they're going to leave and they're going to be angry. But you also don't want to buy too much. And why is that? Well, you could have something like spoilage. So you know, if you're talking about something like food, food spoils over time. Or if you're talking about electronics, it might become obsolete. Uh, and you also have to, for example, you have to store these things. So you have storage costs. If you buy a ton of of, of inventory, you're going to have to pay possibly to expand your storage capacity. So so there's reasons that, that you don't want too little inventory, you, you don't want too much. When you make that order, when you pick up the phone and call your supplier and say, okay, I need to order some inventory, we, we need to figure out a way to figure, well, how, how much do we want? So when we're thinking about this, it's best to remember that the total cost of, of inventory and what we're doing here is not just a function of the purchase cost of the inventory. So let's say we're talking about hot dogs. The cost of, of the inventory, the hot dogs that we have for our hot dog restaurant, is not just how much it costs for a hot dog, but there's also an ordering cost, which is the cost to actually place an order, have someone come out and deliver it on a truck. But then this carrying cost. Right, so the carrying cost, we're talking about the cost to, to like store these hot dogs. Let's say that you buy so many hot dogs that you can't put them all in your freezer, well then you have to buy another freezer. Well, so there's a carrying cost associated with, with having that inventory. And so when we think about this cost function and realize that it's not just the purchase cost, but also these other things, this becomes a factor when we're thinking about not buying too little or not buying too much inventory because what we want to do is we want to balance these things right so if we say okay well there's a cost involved with picking up the phone and ordering hot dogs because the 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 supplier has to drive the truck out here and incur gas and pay a driver so they're going to charge us for for shipping or or whatever so you might say well let me just buy a ton of hot dogs well, but, but now you have that carrying cost is going to be higher. Your ordering cost is low because you just have one big order, but now you have a higher carrying cost. So what you want to do is you want to balance. Balance these costs. And you need to find the optimal order. So you want to say, okay, I'm, I've looked at both these things, and now you want to find optimal order size, the perfect order size given these things. So the nice thing about all this is, is that there's a, there's, a, there's a formula that we can use that will help you balance these things out. So let's, let's go with an example, though. Let's illustrate this through an example. So let's say we, 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 you decide you want to start a restaurant. But this time we're not going to do hot dogs. Let's do, let's do uh, chocolate milk. So your restaurant... This is going to be a family restaurant. Okay, so the kids want chocolate milk. When the parents come in, their kids, they, they don't want to, uh, the kids aren't big wine drinkers. They, they decide they want chocolate milk. So the chocolate milk comes in little cartons, but what do we have to be careful of? Well, chocolate milk has an expiration date. You can't uh, set the chocolate milk in there for a year and give it to some kid. Or, well, I guess you could, but that'd be cruel. So the chocolate milk can spoil. Remember we talked about we've got we've got this spoilage problem. Plus you have to store this chocolate milk, right? You might need a second refrigerator if you buy so much. And but at the same time, we don't want people getting upset if if we don't have any chocolate milk. So so let let's go ahead and let's figure out well what what is this formula that I've been talking about here in order to figure out what's the optimal order size of how much chocolate milk 
should we buy? So we're trying to figure out optimal order size, right? Optimal order. And how much is that? Okay, well, let's look at our formula. So our formula, optimal order, we're going to call it Q star. So Q star, I'll just erase that there. Q star is going to be our optimal order. But we need to know another, a few other things because Q star is what we're going to be trying to solve for. But we also need to know, and we're going to take the square root of this whole thing, we're going to need to know something called the cost of placing an order, the order cost. And that's just from our cost function above. I'm just going to call that R. But if we go back to our cost function, see, we've got order cost right here. So that's, if you think of, for example, so a, a chocolate milk, you have to have the chocolate milk delivered to you. Now let's say that it was some kind of a, a, a bookstore where you had a campus bookstore. Well, when you order the books, there's an ordering cost, right? Shipping. You have to pay for shipping. Every time you make an order, there's a shipping cost. Well, there's a shipping cost here with the chocolate milk. We have to have a driver come out and deliver it to us. And we're going to call that order cost R. And then we have to know the carrying cost. Now, some of these things are a little bit difficult to estimate. And, and, and so, you know, we're not going to have an exact uh, number, maybe, but we'll just come up with our best estimate. And we're going to call that carrying cost, we're going to call that H, but then up in the numerator, there's one other thing we need to know called D, demand. Annual units demanded. How much chocolate milk is demanded? How much do people want in a year or whatever period we're talking about? So, so this, when we've got the carrying cost, we're actually talking about here, this H is the carrying cost of one unit for one year. So hypothetically, if we were gonna keep one thing of chocolate milk for an entire year, that's the carrying cost is H. R is the cost of the order, and then D is the annual units demanded. That doesn't look like a D, that looks more like an O. I apologize for my penmanship. We've got the square root of two times R, our order cost, times D, over H. So when we have this formula, now we can go ahead and start computing this. Oh, that R looks terrible. My apologies. We're going to get that all cleaned up. All right. Oh, that looks even worse. Okay. Well, I'm just going to leave that be. So let's take our example here. So in our example, we're going to have to put some numbers to these items right here. Well, not Q star. Q star is what we're actually solving for. But we have to have an R, an H, and a D in order to, to plug in here and find out our optimal order size, how many chocolate milks we want to order. So let's say that we think about it and we say, you know what, based on our past, uh, we, we think that you know past data tells us that this is going to be 200 uh, things of chocolate milk are going to be demanded this year. So you say, okay, well, what's the order cost? How much does it cost to have that chocolate milk brought out here? Well, $50, the driver will charge it. Okay, well, what's the carrying cost of one unit of chocolate milk for a year? Well, let's say that's $2. So now we need to solve and say, what is this Q star? So that's what we're going to do next. So now we just plug in. So we say Q star... It's equal to, let's see if my penmanship's a little bit better this time around. So 2, and then we're going to have the R, which is 50, and then the D, which is 200, and then we're going to put that all over H, which is 2. Put that in here. And multiply this out, take this all, and then just take the square root. And we end up with Q star is going to be 100. So what does that mean? That means that our optimal order size, we talk about up here, the optimal order size that will balance the ordering cost and the cost of carrying our inventory. 
that will balance these things, the perfect fit is to make an order of 100 chocolate milks. So that's how we solve. We use EOQ to solve for the optimal ordering size.